everyone, and welcome to this webinar about um, collection development. I'm going to give you some um, suggested titles, and the theme I'm doing this time is called The Unnamed Woman. This is a trend many of us have seen in literature these days, um, and it uh, encompasses all types of genres. This is, um, these are books that are like the woman who, the so-and-so's daughter, my secret sister. Um, it's always a woman in relationship usually to someone else. Um, I like to call it the unnamed woman. Um, so I thought this would be a good topic to um, talk about and give some recommendations to have in your collection. So the books that kind of started all of this, this trend, I like to follow trends in literature, um, is um, we have Gone Girl that came out in 2012, and then The Girl on the Train that came out in 2015. Both of these were made into movies as well, which a lot of unnamed women books become movies. Um, the popularity of these two thrillers really gave a jump start to what we call, um, what they call in the publishing business, domestic thrillers. Um, but we are seeing more and more of the unnamed woman in nonfiction books and literary fiction as well. So that's just a little intro, a little background before I go through and give you some recommendations of books you might want to include in your collection. So the first book I have is called Death in Her Hands by Otessa Moshvi. And it is, I would say this would fall under literary fiction. Um, one day, 72-year-old um, Vesta uh, is, the, is, the one, is the unnamed woman's name. She's walking her dog and she finds a note. And the note says, her name is Magda. No one will ever know who killed her. It wasn't me. Here is her dead body. So with that, at the very beginning, you know that this is going to be a hunt for the killer of uh, Vesta. But this is not a typical whodunit thriller, as I said before. It's more literary fiction. It's really more of a study of Vesta, um, the uh, woman who found the note. And it is, um, it's about the story of her and it's actually about her, and I'm not giving anything away, um, her likely journey of slowly losing touch with reality. So, and this has gotten a lot of great reviews. All of these books I'm including in this webinar have gotten really good reviews. The next book is called The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abhi Dare. Um, this came out in February of this year, but it's gotten a lot of buzz. It's about a young Nigerian girl. Her name is Ajuni. She's 14 years old. And all she really wants in life is to get an education. And her mother tells her that in order to get what she wants in life, she needs to have a quote unquote louding voice. Basically, she needs to speak up for herself to decide her own future. But things don't turn out the way Aduni wants them to. Um, instead, Aduni's father, after her mother passes away, Aduni's father sells Aduni to be the third wife of a much older local man. Things are it's not a good marriage, and she runs away and she works in, um, in service to a wealthy family at a nearby larger city. This book is so, it's so well written, so well done. It is a glimpse into forced marriage and servitude. But what's, fit, what's most heartbreaking to me about this book is that it's not set a long time ago. It's set in the 21st century. So this is something that 
is happening to young women now. So um, while it's fiction, it has some basis in fact. So I really recommend this one. And it's also a very good audio book as well. The narrator is excellent. Next up, I have the Radium Girls. Now, I have two of the editions here. Um, I have the Young Readers Edition, which actually does not come out until September of this year. But the original version, the Radium Girls, it, um, it is already out. It came out in March of 2018, actually. And it's also in paperback. Um, this is by both uh, versions are by Kate Moore. This is um, historical um, nonfiction, and it is the story of um, set in the early 20th century, um, uh, the 1920s, 1930s. Um, hundreds of girls, young girls in particular, they worked at a company called American Radium. And what they did was they painted watch dials with this luminous radium paint. Um, at the time, this is strange, but radium was seen as something that was healthful that was was not <laughs> something that could harm you but soon of course a lot of these young girls they start to get sick um, they continue to work for american radium because it's at the time there wasn't a lot of job opportunities and it was um, good steady work and pay but the um the people that run American Radium basically saw the girls' sickness as a risk to the, the bottom line, to them making money. This is a story of courage of the young women who fought back. It has been, um, it has been made into a movie. It has not come out yet. Um, but as always, when a book is made into a movie, you're going to have more patrons coming in wanting to check out the book. So I do recommend if you don't already have this in your collection, the Radium Girls, to add that. And then also in September, get the Young Readers edition to the Radium Girls. This next one I have is The Woman in the Mirror. It's a gothic fiction book by Rebecca James. It's, um, it's a, of course, a chilling modern day gothic book. However, it is set in between 1947 and present day, and it does flip back and forth in time. Some people like that. Some people love that, like me. Some people hate that. So just know that. It came out on um, July 3rd of this year. Um, in 1947, um, Alice Miller comes to work at Winterbourne Hall in Cornwall, England, as a governess to two children. And things, of course, they start out pretty good. Um, but then the children start acting strange. The father has some sinister behavior. Um, and then present day, there's an artist named Rachel Wright. And she learned that she is biologically related to the father of the 1947 story, Captain de Grey. And she is now the only heir to Winterbourne. So she travels there and she does a little um, uh, deep track research um, into the de Grey family. And it's a gripping story of love and obsession and madness. So I think this will go over well with a lot of readers. Um, then we have Old Love Girl Girls by Gail Godwin. This would be, this would fall under literary fiction as well. It's a story about two women that meet as roommates in college um, at Lovegood Junior College, which is a two-year college. Their names are Mary and Fern. And um, a tragic accident happens the first semester with one of the girls. And they basically go their separate ways. Um, the first half of the book is the girls in school. And the second half is 
it hops around in time a little bit and it's about what happens to Mary and Fern and they eventually do reconnect and figure out some things that happened in their past and why it happened. So for fans of literary fiction, this would be a good read. We have Pizza Girl by Jean Keon Frazier. Pizza Girl is, um, it's, I'm gonna say it's a quirky story. That's what, um, it came out in June 9th of this year. It's about an 18 year old girl. She's pregnant and she is a pizza delivery person. Uh, an interesting note on this book is that we never know the girl's name. Sometimes that happens in the unnamed woman books, like she's literally not named in the book. Um, but so in this book, the, the main character does not have a name. Um, this is a debut novel that's been getting a lot of buzz. The, um, the young girl um, has some problems with her family. She had an alcoholic father who passed away. There is um, a lot of addiction and depression in this book. However, it's also a, just kind of a dark comedy. Um, for example, the, the girl, the unnamed girl, is, um, you know, she, she delivers pizza and she's particularly obsessed with certain customers and she really enjoys this one customer who orders um, pizza with pickles all the time. So, um, it's not necessarily a downer, but it is definitely a dark comedy. Um, and so for the, your patrons that like quirky novels, this would be a good one. Something She's Not Telling Us by Darcy Bell. Darcy Bell is known for another um, thriller. This is a thriller um, called A Simple Favor that did really well and it was made into a movie. This is awesome. This is a classic unnamed woman thriller. It is the story of Charlotte and Rocco, who are brother and sister. And Rocco soon starts dating this girl, and her name's Ruth. And Ruth and Rocco's sister, Charlotte, do not get along. Um, they are both, what I like a lot about unnamed woman thrillers is usually the characters aren't very likable. Um, I enjoy that, but not everyone does. But so Ruth and Charlotte both have some really strange qualities that, you know, aren't really endearing. Um, Darcy Bell is excellent at her pacing and keeping the reader turning pages. So this is um, a fast read. So I would recommend this for your patrons who just love a good domestic thriller where you really don't know what's happening until the very end. We have Daughters of Smoke and Fire by Ava Oma. This is, um, this came out in May of 2020. It is, um, I would put this as historical fiction. It's set in Iran and it follows the struggles of the Kurdish people. The author herself is a female Kurdish writer. Um, the plot is um, about Layla. She's a young Kurdish woman in Iran and she dreams of going to college. She really wants to become a filmmaker. Um, but what happens is her brother Chia soon disappears for unknown reasons in, in um, Tehran and Layla fights to go and find him. Um, it is a young woman's fight for freedom and justice for her brother. So it's a strong book with strong characters. Um, it's just a really great historical fiction. We have The Girl Beneath the Sea by Andrew Maine. This is what uh, I would call a detective mystery. Um, it's a little different than your usual detective mysteries in that the main character, Sloan, is a police diver in Florida. So she usually, her job is to find evidence that's in the ocean. Um, but instead, one day when she's looking for some evidence, 
um, she finds a body instead. And therein starts the whole plot of what's, well, who, who is the person that she found. Um, I just really like that the, um, that the police detective, who, the, who is the police diver, she is, um, again, a strong female main character. Um, this is um, in a series, I will say, and the second one comes out in February of 2021. So you might want to keep that in mind. I put a little bonus book on here because, because I've called this uh, webinar The Unnamed Woman. Um, I am seeing more and more in literature um, The Unnamed Man. So um, we're seeing a lot of books that the man who, the husband, that, blah, 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 the boy, I think there's one called The Boy in the Woods. Um, so we're crossing over and we're, we're including the men. So I want to include this one and it's called He Started It and it is by Samantha Downing. Some of you might uh, remember Samantha Downing as the author of a very popular um, domestic thriller of an unnamed woman called My Lovely Wife. Um, but this one, it's about three siblings and two spouses of those siblings and their grandfathers passed away and he had this wish for his um his ashes to be spread at a certain location where they used to go as kids so the the three siblings and the two spouses of three of those siblings of two of those siblings they go on a road trip and of course what could possibly go wrong um but it is interesting because in order to inherit their grandfather's money, they have to actually recreate this exact trip that they took as children. Um, so you know things are going to happen and the cover itself, I think, um, is very um, glaring that things are not going to go as you think they will. So that is just a short webinar I had today about some titles you might want to include in your collection, um, some uh, new titles and some that are coming out very soon. If you have any questions for me or comments or suggestions of um, collection development webinar topics that you would like for me to include in the future, please let me know. Um, I, I love to give Reader's Advisory um, suggestions, and I love working on different themes. So included here is my email and my phone number. Um, thank you all for listening to me today, and I hope you have a wonderful day.